Hello, and welcome to Praying on Purpose. When we daven, we ask for things. That's not all we do, but a major component of our tefillah, our prayer experience, is what we call bakasha. When we ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu for assistance in all of our personal efforts and endeavors in life, we ask Hashem for assistance in learning. We ask God for assistance in earning a livelihood. We ask God for assistance when it comes to matters of health and, of course, national security and so much more. You know, who, on, on whose behalf are we praying? So it goes without saying, we are davening on our own behalf and on behalf of other people. It shouldn't be lost on us, and this is not something I want to focus on right now, but that whenever we ask for things, we are asking in the plural form, right? We ask, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, HaShiveinu Avinu, Sarazecha, Slach Lanu, Rifa'enu, Barechaleinu, etc. We are not asking for ourselves, only we are thinking about others as well. But the idea is, obviously, that we are asking on behalf of people, mortal human beings who rely who are completely dependent upon the goodness, the graciousness, the blessing, the bounty of God. Despite that, there is a particular refrain. There's an expression that appears a pretty significant number of times, I would say somewhat scattered throughout our davening, in which we seem to be asking HaKadosh Baruch Hu to grant certain requests, not for us, but for Him. So, for example... In the Shemon Esrei, in the Bracha of Geula, we say, Another time we'll have to really unpack this Bracha more properly. We ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu to intercede on our behalf. Please redeem us speedily. Do it for, Leman means on whose sake? Shemecha, for the sake of your name. For your name's sake. Don't do it for us. Do it for you, Kaviyachal. We say the same thing at the end of davening. There's a tefillah, elokai, netzor, l'shoni meira. And over there we say, asei laman shemecha, asei laman yiminecha. Throughout the tachnun, particularly the long tachnun, in avinu makenu, and slichos, which some of us have been saying, and the rest of us are going to start saying, Bez Hashem, this coming Motzei Shabbos, we say again and again, Hashem, do this, asei laman shemecha. Don't do it for us, do it for you. Asei laman amitecha, asei laman brisecha. Do it for you. This is a little bit of a strange idea. Why, we, why would we ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu to assist us as if this is going to somehow be better for him? HaKadosh Baruch Hu is omniscient. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is perfect. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is not lacking in any way whatsoever. And here we have what seems to be a little bit of chutzpah when we dive in, or maybe a lot of bit of chutzpah, to say, do this not for us, do it for you. Perhaps the most, I would say the most profound example of this is throughout the Aseris and Mechuvah. We're still a little more than a week away, but beginning with Rosh Hashanah through Yom Kippur, we say there are certain paragraphs that we add into the Shemon Esri. The first one, familiar to most of us, We ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu to remember us, to record us in the Book of Life, and why? We ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu to grant us life, why? For your sake or in this case, for his sake, with the capital H, we ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu to grant us life, to renew our lease on life, not for us, not for me personally, not because this is something that I want and I desire, but because this is for you. What does this mean? How does this make any sense, that we ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu for personal assistance in life, the brach of Geul and Shmon Esrei, that personal request is one, we ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu to help us through some very, very difficult, stressful situations when we don't really know how to fend for ourselves, when we find ourselves in, 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 in moments in life in which we really, really, really need divine assistance because we don't know what to do. So that's a very appropriate prayer. But then we conclude it by saying, do this, Laman Shemecha, do it for you. What exactly does that mean? So th- there's probably a lot to say over here. I want to begin by offering Imar Makom and then sort of pivoting and focusing a little more on a different idea. In the Sefer Nefesh HaChayim, I think it's important to just state this for the record as we head into the days of Tshuva, even though we're going to have to spend a little more time now or at some point in the future really dealing with this more thoroughly. But in the Sefer Nefesh HaChayim, Ruchayim Vlazhin, in Shar Beis Peregid Aleph, so he points out that it's very interesting if you take a look at the Machs of Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah the Yom Adin, the day in which we ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu for, as we know so much, he said it's quite remarkable that if you look at the machzah from beginning to end, you will find that the tefillos, and we're not referring necessarily to all of the specific piyutim, but I think this is true by and large, but certainly when it comes to Shimon Esrei, 
when it comes to the Iker text of Tefillah, he says it is Musudari says Meroshu ad Sofo Rak al Kvod Machuso Yisbarach Shemo. We're not talking about ourselves as all, at all. Says the Nevesh Chaim. When you think about it, the theme, the theme of Rosh Hashanah is all about God, and he says that this is not by chance. It is not just you know that you know the Anshei Knesset Gedola somehow they got confused and they forgot what Rosh Hashanah is all about. He says at moments like this we try to channel all of our energy. And remind ourselves that we are here in this world exclusively to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's why we are here. He is not here to serve us. And so therefore, our needs, our needs are all the way of fulfilling ultimately the Ratzon of Hashem. And on the day of Rosh Hashanah, the day on which we are Mamlech HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which we coronate the king, we really, really want to highlight this idea in a very, very clear way. He points out that it was Chana in her tefillah, who really sort of set the stage for this, because when Chana was uh, begging God for a child, which was obviously a very, very personal and dear need that she needed for herself, yet she committed herself at that moment that if you grant me this, I will make it up to you, so to speak. I will take him and I will dedicate him dedicate him to your service. It's all about you, says the Nefesh Chaim. But on a little more of a practical level, I want to share with you that Rav Shlomo Volbi, when they say Fale Shor, so he quotes from one of his Rebbeim, Rabbi Yeruchim, Mashkiach Vimir Yeshiva, who says specifically around, about this concept of the Manchel Kim Chaim, that we have to try to think to ourselves when we are asking HaKadosh Baruch Hu for personal things, how we can dedicate ourselves and halavai the fulfillment of these requests, if HaKadosh Baruch Hu should grant us our request, how we can channel them back to his service. The way Mavobi says it is such a fascinating idea as that we want to try to be the kind of people that our Kodesh Baruch Hu will look at and will say, you know, I, I, I really need this guy. I really need him. He's doing my work on earth. He lives his life as a sort of a Lamancha life, that he's not living selfishly. When he wakes up in the morning and throughout the day, he's thinking about how can I help other people? How can I assist other people? How can I be Marbek Vot Shemayim in the world? And if this is the person's attitude, then such a person can actually go ahead and say what appears to be chutzpah and say, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Zorcheinu L'chaim, Melech Hafez L'chaim, Kasveinu B'Sever L'chaim. Why? Not for me, Laman do it for you, because look, I am living a my life dedicated to you and to your service. And so in a sense, if we're going to say these words, we have to really, really try to think to ourselves, to what extent can I live up to these words? Or more specifically, to what extent can I prop myself up so that when I say these words, I can say them with a straight face? You know, everybody here is going to say these words. When it comes to Rosh Hashanah, starting with the first night of Rosh Hashanah, we're going to say, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Zochreinu L'chaim, Lemancha. When we say that word, Lemancha, we want to be able to say it as if we mean it. And so therefore, we need to ask ourselves that very, very basic question. Can I? Of course I can. But am I? And to what extent can I improve living my life in a way that truly reflects a life of Lamancha. And so therefore, when we say throughout the davening, it's not exclusive to the Aseris and Mechuvah, the Yimei Of course, there are definitely many, many more references, and that shouldn't be lost on us. Again, that's quite significant, that the Slichos and Avinu Makenu and the Lon Tachnon, which we say throughout the year, but really thematically connects very, very much, associates very, very much with the, the themes of Chuva. But even again, the bracha of Re'eva Yenu that we say every single day, three times a day throughout the year, it is Laman Shemecha. We should be thinking about how we can live our lives to do for you. This doesn't mean that we are not entitled to have our own personal interests. It doesn't mean that there's anything somehow petty and insignificant and that we should feel somehow selfish, that we should feel that we are somehow uh, betraying God's faith in us by going ahead and having the chutzpah to ask for things that we personally desire, for asking God's Baruch for ourselves and members of our family and community and complete strangers that they should live lives of nachas ruach. It's totally okay to live a life in which we seek things that give us pleasure and fulfillment and satisfaction. But ultimately, what is that all about? It's about serving Him. And so therefore, every time we say these words, Laman Shemecha, say Laman Shemecha, say Laman Yiminecha, all these expressions, for your sake, we should be thinking to ourselves as we are saying these words, am I, am I living my life as a Lamancha life? To what extent can I truly say that I am living my life for you? And here I can prove it. It is evident 
in what I say. It is what I, evident in what I do. It is evident through my actions, through my priorities in life, how I live my life. And if, if we can, in fact, see and correct that alignment, so then we are we are able to stand before our Kaddish Baruch Hu on the Yom Adin. I say, Kosveinu l'chaim, zocheinu l'chaim, l'chaim, l'chaim. Do it not for us, but do it for you. May we all be zocher to be inspired, particularly as we head into the days of Slichos, as we begin making our way closer to the Aseris Yimei Tshuva, to live lives, not lives for our own sake, but to live lives, Laman Shemo, to live lives for His sake. And if we can do so, Be'ezus Hashem, when we say these words, and every time we say it throughout the day, throughout our davening, I say Laman, we know that we can say that we are doing it not for ourselves, but we are doing it for you. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.